enough. We'll see you next time on The Chase. Goodbye. Potato. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Anne Sanders. First and four, good afternoon. We have new details regarding Cardinal George Pell and his handling of complaints of historical sex abuse within the Catholic Church. The contents of a top-secret Royal Commission report have been revealed, allegedly linking the Cardinal to a cover-up. Evan Batten has been following the story. Evan, it's taken some three years to see this redacted report. Well, and it was ultimately the release of George Pell from jail last month that meant that the full findings of the Royal Commission could be released this morning. And it ultimately found that Pell knew that children were being abused as early as 1973 and had considered ways to avoid gossip. It found he was aware at the time of the involvement of Jared Risdale and John Day and Ted Dowling. It was on his radar. It found, quote, we are satisfied that by 1973, Cardinal Pell was not only conscious of child sexual abuse by clergy, but that he also had considered measures of avoiding situations which might provoke gossip about it. He had considered the prudence of Ridsdale taking boys on overnight camps. The Royal Commission in 2017 was heavily redacted at the time so as not to prejudice any criminal proceedings that ultimately saw Pell jailed and then acquitted a month ago and released from jail. Unsurprisingly, critics of the Catholic Church today say it's just been very poorly handled. These are the findings from a five-year Royal Commission that had a very considered nuanced process. Uh, they need to act. Uh, he needs to be defrocked and removed of his, his status in the church. And George Pell is thought to be staying at this uh, Homebush Seminary. So far today, there's been no sign of him. We've been in contact with the Catholic Church and they've indicated that he uh, won't be speaking today, but may well provide a statement later on. And Thanks, Evan. Sydney's Newmarch House Nursing Home says it'll meet all conditions imposed on it by the industry regulator after it's threatened to revoke its aged care licence. Chris Reason is following the story. Chris, the operators are expected to make an announcement on changes within the hour. Well, and good afternoon to you. That's right. The, uh, after threats of having their licence revoked and effectively their operations here at Newmarch, just outside of Penrith and Caddens, uh, today Anglicare says they are confident they've met the demands of the Aged Care Commission and will survive past five o'clock this afternoon. On a day that two more of their staff tested positive for COVID-19, Anglicare says they've managed to meet the list of requirements, including finding an independent advisor to oversee operations. They say and employ that person for the next three months. Now, after 16 deaths and more than 60 cases, Anglicare said in a statement that the families and residents can rest assured that this will mean issues here will be resolved expeditiously. Well, the families welcome that. They have their doubts, though. Let's have a listen to um, how one of those families responded today and the Premier this morning at her morning press conference. It's too late. The damage is done. There's already 16. When's number 17? But I'm relieved if the regulators come in and has now put them on notice about revoking their licence, that's a good thing. Now, the issue is also dominating much of the questioning at a New South Wales parliamentary inquiry today with some fiery exchanges between the Health Minister, Brad Hazard, and uh, his questioners on the panel. All this on a day when outside of Newmarch there was only one positive case statewide and that from a record 10,900 tests. The Premier are calling that result amazing. And back to you. Thank you, Chris. We're just one day from the news we've all been waiting for. The Prime Minister and State Premiers are preparing to begin rolling back Australia's coronavirus restrictions for the first time. They'll meet tomorrow in a National Cabinet hookup to plan the road out of restrictions. Tim Lester is following events from Parliament. Good afternoon, Tim. This won't be a one-size-fits-all approach from the leaders. Not at all, and In fact, the leaders will get in tomorrow's National Cabinet meeting the same briefing on the medical data. They will set up a broad national approach with the Prime Minister, but then how that is handled will be very much a state-by-state -state decision. Indeed, many of the states are already moving ahead, relaxing their own restrictions. Mind you, today, Gladys Berejikli and the New South Wales Premier said that she could not be sure some of these relaxations would be in place by Sunday in time for Mother's Day. This despite the fact that the federal government is saying today that the premiers will very much lead on this issue. What I expect 
is a clear roadmap out uh, with clear stages and then each state will be able to judge and we'll support each of the states as they make their judgments of their own circumstances and readiness to go uh, to easing restrictions. Tim, how much does this opening up of the economy worry Australia's medical chiefs? Well, it does, Anne, although there is, I think, general optimism among those who are watching this closely from a medical perspective. The big questions, though, will only really arise from about five days to a fortnight and even longer after the changes take effect, when we can begin to see whether the COVID-19 case numbers really have altered much according to the changes. Now, uh, the professionals are saying they expect they will, but hopefully not too much. To get no significant increases is not realistic, but we can keep it at really low levels. Winter will be an issue as well because viruses transmit more than winter. But equally, we can look at other countries, such as Korea, for instance, and we know they've opened up and have kept a lot open and they still are not getting a, a, a second wave or big amount of, of um, uh, cases. The same for Taiwan. So, Professor Collignon, optimistic, though he does say those big crowd events we love, Anne, they are still a long way off. Tim Lester in Canberra. Thank you, Tim. And coming up, we'll have more details on what those restrictions will look like for you, including what they mean for your Mother's Day celebrations. New South Wales is not going to follow the recommendations from Federal Parliament, meaning lockdowns will take a little longer to be lifted here. We'll have everything you need to know a little later in the program. Deputy Premier John Barillaro has escaped being fined for staying at his farm after being accused of breaking lockdown laws. And while he won't be punished, his critics say his actions are hypocritical and are calling for his resignation. State political reporter Alex Hart is following the story. Alex, why did police let him off the hook? And New South Wales Police issued a statement a short time ago saying that no breach of the public health order had been detected in relation to John Barillaro's weekend visit to his farm. The property is more than 100 kilometres away from his primary place of residence near Canberra. Police accepted his explanation that he travelled to the property to spend time with his family and also to conduct maintenance tasks. John Barillaro was adamant he'd done nothing wrong when we spoke to him this morning. 100% correct. You have not broken any public no, health. No, you're entitled to go to visit anyone in this state. His political opponents aren't so keen to let him off the hook, though. They say Mr Barillaro's situation is no different to Liberal MP Don Harwin. The Deputy Premier led calls for Mr Harwin to be fined after he was caught out staying at his Airbnb place on the Central Coast. The people of New South Wales and the people of Vida Monero are bloody angry at you right now. You're a hypocrite. Farms are always exempt from the original travel and we've got to tend to livestock. John Barillaro has also hit back at a push from senior members of the National Party who want him removed from the national state leadership. He's told 7 News his position is stronger than ever. Donald Trump has described the COVID-19 pandemic as being worse than Pearl Harbor and 9-11. The president also hit out at a nurse who claimed there's a mass shortage of protective equipment for health workers in the United States. Paul Caddick is in New York, Paul. The president and health workers increasingly at odds as this crisis unfolds. Good afternoon. More grim predictions about the growing impact of coronavirus here in the United States with the former head of the Center for Disease Control today telling Congress to expect the current death toll of around 73,000 to rise sharply in coming weeks. There will be tragically at least 100,000 deaths from COVID by the end of this month. Second, as bad as this has been, it's just the beginning. Until we have an effective vaccine, and unless something very unexpected happens, our viral enemy will be with us for many months and possibly many years. Now, today is National Nurses Day, and President Donald Trump invited some to the Oval Office to praise their efforts during this pandemic, until one of them mentioned the difficulties still in getting protective gear, saying she'd been wearing her mask for a few weeks now. PPE has been sporadic, uh, but... It's been manageable, and we do what we have to do. Sporadic for you, but not sporadic for a lot of other people. And after his visit to a mask-making factory in Arizona yesterday, Donald Trump today insisted that he actually did wear a mask on the visit, just not for long. And after yesterday saying that the nation's coronavirus task force would be winding down within weeks today, he's 
changed his mind, saying it will be continuing indefinitely. I thought we could wind it down sooner, but I had no idea how popular the task force is. From New York, it's back to you. David Brown's here now for a look at our weather. Hello, Brownie. Yeah, good afternoon. And the dry spell continues. Low 20s across most of the uh, metro area during lunch. Mid-20s just a little later. And earlier today, have a look at this. Our weather camera captured this very colourful sunrise. Yes, along the central coast in uh, Terrigal, there's some high-level cloud just sailed in from the west. Now, the high cloud, veils of high cloud stretch right across our state, as you can see there, from border to border. There is a change approaching from the west, and statewide maxima today have been well above the May average. Now, having said that, a cold surge is lining up the southern half of our state this weekend. Snow is in the forecast but both uh, Saturday and Sunday. Temperature-wise, sub-zero right throughout the high country. But at the moment, though, it's very pleasant indeed in the Sydney Basin. We've got 23 degrees and clear skies in Penrith on the coast of Bondi at the moment. City on 21, of course. Weekend weather in detail, top of the hour. All right, see you then, Brownie. And still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, what a teenager had to say for himself after allegedly stabbing a man in a Sydney park because he didn't like being told not to paint graffiti. Adorable pictures of Archie's first birthday. And when will life return to normal here in New South Wales? We'll reveal when shops and restaurants are likely to open. That's coming up. It's going to knock you off your feet. The key players uncensored. I wish I could have done more to Shocking footage exposed. Our burning questions answered. He was killed. Tiger King. What really went down? Shh. Tuesday, 7.30, only on 7. Aldi's one and a half kilo pack of honey soy chicken drumsticks is now only $6.99. Aldi, good, different. The Australian government is working hard to keep businesses in business and Australians in jobs. That's why we've introduced the JobKeeper payment. If you're a business severely impacted by the coronavirus, you'll receive a fortnightly payment of $1,500 for each eligible employee to cover their wages. For employees, it will allow millions of Australians to keep their job, including those who have been stood down. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Fused oil deluxe crisps from Red Rock Deli. You'd never clean your surfaces with this. So why use this? Sponges can carry millions of germs. Dead old wipes kill germs instead of spreading them. Now biodegradable and compostable. It's only natural to want what's best for your toddler. 100% grass-fed milk is better by nature. We know that nature provides the best, which is why 100% grass-fed milk is free from palm oil, GMO and growth hormones. 100% grass-fed milk encourages growth and development, whilst gentle on toddler's tummy and easy to digest. So you have the peace of mind knowing you've made the natural choice. 100% grass-fed milk, made in New Zealand, better by nature. Right now, the comfort of our home has never been more important. So it's good to know that at Fantastic Furniture, you can shop our entire range in store or online. Now with contactless delivery and click and collect services. Find your Fantastic today. Guess who's on the telly? Mummy! Oh, Mummy! Oh, sweetheart! Proudly feeling Australian hockey fans big and small. Sultana Broom. Full on days to start with full on fibre. We know you've always worked hard for your money. In these uncertain economic times, who do you trust to protect your wealth? Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager and leading credit specialist. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years. You don't give in, you don't give up. 
It's called Aussie Spirit, and it takes spirit to get through times like these. It's what inspires us to help. Together we'll get through this. Search Toyota here to help. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News. This is a view from Cronulla. Right now it's 21 degrees. A gas leak is believed to be behind a horror explosion at a coal mine in central Queensland. Five workers were flown from Moranbar to Brisbane with significant burns sustained in the underground blast last night. Four of those are fighting for life. The incident has put further pressure on the Queensland Government with the union claiming it's the fifth mine accident in the last 12 months. A teenager has faced court charged with stabbing a 57-year-old man in a park in northwest Sydney yesterday afternoon. Natasha Squarey is at North Ride. Tash, what sparked this incident? Well, Anne, local resident Scott Dempster was walking home from work and was less than two kilometres from his property when he spotted two teenage boys graffitiing this footbridge here in North Ryde around 5pm. After some fiery words and some pushing and shoving, the older teen, Joshua Watkins, allegedly pulled a knife and started lunging at Mr Dempster. The 57-year-old pulled his own knife, which he carries for work, and told the teen to stand down. Despite putting his weapon away, Mr Dempster was still stabbed in the stomach. His alleged attackers ran off and left a badly injured victim to call triple zero himself. 19-year-old Joshua Watkins spent the night at Ryde Police Station before facing court this afternoon. He claims he's innocent and never had a weapon. His bail application was refused. Joshua, what happened last night? Are you violent, Joshua? Did, did you stab this man? Oh. His 16-year-old mate was released without charge. What happened? Oh. What were you doing in the park? Oh. Mr Dempster underwent surgery last night and is recovering in hospital. And Thanks, Tash. A plane carrying COVID-19 medical supplies has crashed in Somalia, killing all six people on board. The Kenyan aircraft was flying out of Mogadishu when it crashed and burst into flames. The cause isn't clear, but there's speculation it may have been shot down. Somali and Kenyan officials have agreed to jointly investigate the cause. Alarming research suggests at least 90,000 healthcare workers across the globe have been infected by COVID-19. The International Council of Nurses says that figure could double, with some countries not accurately keeping records of health workers' infections. More than 260 nurses and doctors have died from the virus, and the Council says a shortage of protective equipment is putting more lives at risk. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have released a new video to mark the first birthday of their son, Archie. The clip shows Meghan reading her son one of his favourite books in support of a coronavirus appeal from Save the Children. It's a duck and he's about to eat a piece of bread. <laughs> Turn the page. Is that the piece of bread? Let's start the page. Let's show everybody. It's a rabbit and he's about to eat a carrot. Members of the royal family have taken to Twitter to wish Archie a very happy birthday. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, are you heading back to work and want to make sure you're safe? There's a new app which allows you to report any breaches of safety in the workplace. We'll show you how it works. Plus, getting to the bottom of the Ruby Princess debacle, see the bombshell new testimony in Parliament today. And in sport with Jim Wilson, some big developments in the NRL's plans to restart the season. Tonight on 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Disturbing claims of Catholic Church cover-ups, why restrictions will remain for Mother's Day and a happy reunion following a horror fall. Tonight on 7 News at 6. Celebrating Mum with social distancing. How Aussies are still showing love. And the last minute gift guide on Sunrise tomorrow. Now they tell you the truth when I started out. I could hardly even swim. The guy in the hardware store just burst out laughing. <laughs> I had to stay below deck. I was so seasick. So my mum was like, there's no way you're playing football. Oh, back when I started, I was just trying to grow one plant. Life doesn't always turn out as we imagine. Australia, you have our support. 
Find out more at nab.com.au. Nab, more than money. Oh, I just went and got some milk. Hey, wait a sec. Let's try new white chalk flavour. Just like a white chalk milkshake, only crunchy. G'day, Sue. Join me for a walk? I'd love to, but my legs are aching. I have the same problem. You need Revitive. It's the circulation booster that gets my leg muscles pumping, which could improve circulation and help relieve aches, pains and swelling. Plus, it's drug-free. It's truth. Someone got Revitive. I'll race you to the cafe. Get Revitive today. It just might change your life. For Mother's Day, see offers in store or revitive.com. The game that makes the most millionaires is giving you 20 million more reasons to get super excited this Saturday. Lotto's $20 million Super Draw Saturday. Play now in-store at thelot.com or the Lot app. What if I get coronavirus? How do I do my rehab now? Why is it so hard to get out of bed? COVID-19 is impacting us all differently, which is why we've introduced Medibank COVID-19 Health Assist. With direct access to hundreds of healthcare experts, eligible members can receive health advice and support from their homes at no extra cost. Visit medibank.com.au to see how we're providing better support for our members. Save up to 15% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance Policy online. Hey, good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that Allianz uh... feeling. Search for a quote today. Having a home to feel safe in has never felt more important. And with home loan know-how from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, we can help you feel supported wherever you are on your home buying journey. At Rams, whether you're starting out or refinancing, we're here for you every step of the way. Rams, greater together. Businesses to begin reopening and workers to head back into the office and the work site, many are concerned about their safety. The government has rolled out a new app aimed at keeping the state's workers safe. It's called Speak Up, Save Lives and has been described by the Minister for Better Regulation, Kevin Anderson, as a way for workers to anonymously report safety breaches in the workplace. The app is free to download and available on the Apple and Android store. Time for sport with Jim Wilson. Hello, Jim. A uh, win this afternoon for some NRL stars. Yes, and good afternoon to you. Afternoon, everyone. The NRL is set to allow players who have refused the flu vaccination to restart the season on May 28. There was speculation players would be banned for not adhering to the anti-vaccination protocols, but Seven News understands the NRL is satisfied that around 97% of players have received the flu shot. I suppose um, that's just individual decision, isn't it? Um... You know, and for me, uh, I have it myself. But clubs have been told players won't be allowed to visit their mums this Sunday on Mother's Day due to quarantine restrictions. Penrith captain James Tamo says Nathan Cleary is genuinely remorseful as he awaits a possible suspension for flouting social distancing laws. Tamo says it was out of character for the Panthers star after a video was posted on TikTok. My first thought is that's not Nathan, Something, something's up. I know Nathan, you know, he's... He's not that out there. He's, you know, he's more introverted than anything. Cleary has until 1pm tomorrow to formally respond to the NRL's Please Explain. The crisis at Rugby Australia has deepened this afternoon with the Australian Olympics boss Matt Carroll ruling himself out of the CEO's role. It comes a day after respected board member Peter Wiggs resigned as a director. Acting CEO Rob Clark says a $16 million loan from World Rugby will save them from financial ruin. Clearly the game is not in healthy financial shape. I'm confident the World Rugby money is secure and that that will um, be approved imminently. Clark replaces Raylene Castle, who resigned last month. 
Batsman Joe Burns says a summer showdown with Virat Kohli's India shapes as the toughest challenge of his career. Having earned his first national contract last week, Burns wants to prove his worth by piling on the runs against one of the world's best test outfits. Both teams are going to have a lot to play for with the number one ranking and the, the position on the world test championships. Um, and that, that's what's motivating us. Joe Burns there speaking on Zoom video earlier this afternoon. Burns and Marnus Labashain are among six new faces that will be given contracts by Cricket Australia. Sydney is now a part of seven Saturday horse racing coverage for the next six weeks. Champion trainer Chris Waller has a host of winning hopes at the Ramwick meeting this Saturday and will also chase more Group 1 glory in Adelaide. Ramwick and Rose Hill meetings will feature over the next six Saturdays. We saw Hugh Bowman last week ride five winners, so... Uh, the best jockeys, the best horses are still going around and it's, it's great that we can see it live and free on Channel 7. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, Caitlin. And Bruce and the team will be with you on Saturday. All the big races, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide and Brisbane are part of our Saturday coverage. Rising Formula One star Lando Norris says he'd love to drive a real-life supercar. After getting a taste in the E-Series last night, Shane Van Gisbergen took out race one despite a skirmish late on the final lap. On a virtual version of the Spa circuit in Belgium, Norris caused mayhem heading into pit lane in race two. I had to either drive a whole lap with a completely broken car or um, drive the wrong way for just a few metres. In a series where spectacular crashes are the norm, Scotty McLaughlin heads the leaderboard after five rounds. And more sport coming your way at six. That's really exciting news about the racing yes. in Sydney over the next six Great weekends. News. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Our top stories are just ahead. And next, Australia gets approval to reopen, but we won't be ending lockdown in New South Wales just yet. But we're not far off. See when things will start returning to normal in a few minutes. Australian super accounts have been battered by the crisis, but some have fared better than others. Health Minister Brad Hazard grilled in Parliament over the Ruby Princess disaster and staying slim in isolation. See the lockdown weight loss diet created by our top scientists. That's coming up. Our first home, our first big commitment. Sunday, they come home. That is bloody beautiful. Oh, this is like the ultimate. Wow, I've never ever seen that before. I love it. It's perfect. Will these lovebirds... Here we have a pretend engagement ring. ...get their fairy tale ending? <gasps> a very special reveal. Sunday at 7 on 7. Telfast knows that hay fever can strike at any time. It works fast to relieve allergy symptoms like watery eyes, a runny nose and sneezing. Nothing beats Telfast for staying alert and focused when hay fever strikes. Having a home to feel safe in has never felt more important. And with Home Loan Know-How from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, we can help you feel supported wherever you are on your home buying journey. At Rams, whether you're starting out or refinancing, we're here for you every step of the way. Rams, greater together. You wash loads, but do you ever wash your washing machine? Every load leaves behind grime and, ugh, what's that smell? Pino Clean Washing Machine Cleaner removes 99.9% .9 of germs, leaving it clean and fresh for longer. It's not clean, unless it's Pino Clean. Introducing BP Rewards. Now you can earn points for every BP purchase. BP Rewards. Use BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. BP Rewards. Or you can choose to earn Qantas points. Now that's what I call BP Rewards. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. BP Rewards. Your rewards, your way. Right now, the comfort of our home has never been more important. So it's good to know that at Fantastic Furniture, you can shop our entire range in store or online. Now with contactless delivery and click and collect services. Find your fantastic today. My perfect bowl is with mum, of course. Can you give me some? Mmm. Tell me what you think. If I didn't share it with my mum, it would not be my perfect bowl. Oh. <laughs> Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. 
Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on Seven. Contents of a top secret Royal Commission report have been revealed, allegedly linking Cardinal Pell to a sex abuse cover up. Sydney's new March House nursing home says it'll meet all conditions imposed on it by the industry regulator after it threatened to revoke its aged care licence. Deputy Premier John Barillaro has escaped being fined for staying at his farm after being accused of breaking lockdown laws. And still to come, restrictions lifted across Europe. So when will travel be back on the cards? That's ahead. The Premier has ruled out easing restrictions on family gatherings in time for Mother's Day, regardless of tomorrow's National Cabinet outcome. The move means we'll have to wait a little longer for our first taste of freedom, but hopefully it'll come soon. Marley Hogan is following the story. Marley, no big family lunch for Mum this Sunday. Good afternoon, Anne. Unfortunately not. There will be no big gatherings of friends and family to celebrate mothers this year. That's despite the National Cabinet set to announce that gatherings of up to 10 people will be allowed in a person's home. Premier Gladys Berejiklian says New South Wales just isn't ready for that yet and the current restrictions will still stand. Two adults and their children can visit another household and there is no limit to the number of visits a person can accept. The Premier says her government needs to monitor those eased restrictions and the impact it has on coronavirus cases to make sure we don't get to a level that the hospital system can't cope with. I just want to manage expectations and say even if National Cabinet does suggest easing of restrictions, which New South Wales will consider very carefully, they won't be able to be made in time for Mother's Day. New South Wales needs to consider very carefully when we make another jump. We've already um, announced the easing of a number of restrictions in May and we need to see what the cumulative effect of that is. So we don't want to have a, a spike in, in cases that exceeds what we can manage. The Premier did give us a bit of an idea as to when we can see further restrictions eased saying that life will start to look and feel a little bit more normal towards the end of May and June. Thanks, Marley. The coronavirus crisis has had a crippling effect on financial markets and in turn the superannuation accounts of Australians. But experts are urging people not to panic. Financial advisers have told Seven News if you're young, it's actually a great time to purchase high quality assets at a discounted rate. And even if you're a little older, you can hopefully afford to wait out the correction. But while many super funds have taken a huge hit, some are doing better than others. In 7 News at 6, we'll reveal which funds have performed best and whether you should consider switching. There were fireworks at a tense parliamentary hearing today as Health Minister Brad Hazard faced a grilling over his role in the Ruby Princess disaster. Robert Avadia has been following this story, Rob. The minister was accused of dodging scrutiny. Well, that was certainly the accusation, not only dodging questions at the parliamentary inquiry today, but also dodging his responsibility with the special commission of inquiry into what exactly happened with the Ruby Princess. There was certainly a lot of political posturing, not only from the health minister, Brad Hazard, but also his main inquisitor, that was Rob Borzak from the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. Here are some of the highlights. Minister and Mr. Borzak, we were going to sack you. Now, as you can probably see there, the main thrust of Mr. Borzak's uh, suggestion is that it is Brad Hazard who is the boss, the health minister. The buck stops with him, and he was asking why it was not he fronting the special commission of inquiry a couple of days ago, instead of the middle tier epidemiologist, the New South Wales health bureaucrat. Kelly Ann Ressler, who burst into tears and got uh, very emotional when grilled by Commissioner Brett Walker, SC. We're working very hard on this. <clears throat> we did what we could. And Mr Hazard said he doesn't necessarily back the actions of the health bureaucrats, but certainly gives them emotional support in what has been an extremely difficult time for them. He kept on insisting it was inappropriate for him to give any sort of answers to this parliamentary inquiry while the special commission of inquiry into the Ruby Princess continues. Now also today off the coast of Manila, we got our first glimpse of the Ruby Princess ever since she left New South Wales. She arrived there today floating off Manila close to the ovation of the seas, which also brought one coronavirus death into Sydney. It looks somewhat like a ship graveyard. Right now, the cruise industry would have to be the most unloved across the globe. 
A P plate driver who crashed after a wild chase says he ran from officers because of COVID-19. Aaron Cooper claims he didn't want to be fined for breaching restrictions. Andrew Denny has more. Andrew, four others were in the car. What happened to them? Well, Anne, this is the crumpled wreck that's left behind following a police chase through the streets of Sydney South West last night that ended when this car flew off a dead-end road, landing upside down here in the bush. But it didn't stop there. The passengers took off and the police helicopter had to be called in to track them down. Stuck behind the wheel was 21-year-old Aaron Cooper. He'd been driving with four friends aged only in their mid-teens when police tried to pull them over for speeding. Officers say he took off reaching speeds of 100 kilometres an hour before crashing. Uh, <laughs> due to social distancing laws, I didn't want to cop a breach for non-essential travel. So. 16-year-old Leah Burge was one of the girls in the back seat released from hospital this morning. Just tell us what you told him. Like, just to slow down just in case like anything happens and then yeah worst came to us and this happened now police say this was incredibly stupid behavior that should serve as a warning to other drivers it is only luck that no one was killed here last night thanks andrew a welfare check has saved the life of an elderly woman south of brisbane body cam captured the extraordinary moment two police officers found erica four days after she'd fallen they made the house call after a care army volunteer from the Queensland government phoned her but didn't receive an answer. Erica was unable to move, but she still had her sense of humour. Do you remember when you fell down? Uh, four or five days ago. Four or five days ago. Okay. I'm going to I should get you a drink of water, okay? Yeah, in the fridge, I don't know why. I have got some apple juice. Could you make it half half with soda water? You're a nice looking man. Thank you. The two officers have since visited Erica in hospital, saying they were very glad to see more colour in her face this time around. Firefighters in Sydney's west have pulled a man from his burning home. It's understood neighbours called Triple Zero after seeing smoke billowing from the house in Granville. Crews burst into the property and found the 77 year old unconscious. They performed CPR before taking him to Concord Hospital. He's in a critical condition with burns to his face, back and arms. A garbage truck driver has been cleared of dangerous driving charges more than two years after reversing over a grandmother in DY. Hayne Matheson was pushing her grandson in a pram when she was struck. Terra Monateki told the court he didn't see her and only stopped because he noticed the pram rolling away in his rear vision mirror. He was found not guilty this morning but still faces the less serious charge of negligent driving. Work is powering ahead on construction of the new Sydney football stadium with the government saying it remains on time and on budget. Tom Saker is at Moore Park. Tom, it's also keeping plenty of people employed. Well, and this drilling happening behind me represents a significant milestone for the Sydney Football Stadium project. It's the beginning of the building of the foundations. The drill is the first of 1,500 that will dig into more than 30 metres of earth until they hit rock, making sure the 45,000 seat stadium is stable when it's set to open. The government says the goal of playing the 2022 NRL Grand Final is still on track. The project, according to them, and new contractors John Holland is still on time and on budget. With some infrastructure project timelines benefiting from the COVID-19 pandemic, they say this timetable is still unchanged. It's going to create 800 valuable jobs to give people employment at a time when so many people are out of work. It's a wonderful opportunity to go full steam ahead. But the project still has its critics. Well, that's lipstick on a pig. Uh, if they think that this is on time and on budget when they're only showing you holes in the ground, this government is a bit delusional. While this drilling is very important to the whole project, we won't see any more visually exciting progress until the end of the year when the stadium actually begins to rise. Actor Kevin Spacey, who was shunned by Hollywood after a slew of sexual assault claims, 
has compared his experience to those facing financial hardship due to the coronavirus. In the 10-minute address online, he says he believes the emotional struggles are very much the same, urging others to find the positives amid the global health crisis. I feel as though I can relate to what it feels like to have your world suddenly stop. So I do have empathy for what it feels like to suddenly be told that you can't go back to work or that you might lose your job and that it's a situation that you have absolutely no control over. The former House of Cards star was axed from the show following the allegations against him. We're live to ComSec for the latest on your money next. Then, terrifying pictures. What caused this bridge to buckle and twist while loaded with cars? Plus, Europe lifts lockdown laws. Does it mean travel is about to be opened back up? And it's 13 degrees in Katoomba. Brownie will have Sydney's forecast soon. Guilty of the murder of Special Agent Emily Burner. She's alive. You've been gone six years. Where are you? Do you recall anything from your time in captivity? No. She must remember to save herself. She's dangerous. House of Stana Kavik in the riveting new series, Absentia, coming soon to Seven. Credit to you? Here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? Harvey Norman has everything you need for your home. Come into our spacious stores for the best of Australian made. Choose Australian made timber and fabric beds and customise the fabric, colour and timber stain to suit your home. Our range features the best names in Australian made mattresses and ensembles. Sealy, Sleepmaker, Beautyrest, King Coil and Body Balance. Complete your sleep experience with beautiful Australian made Manchester. Support local manufacturers and choose Australian made. Everything you need for your home. Browse online and shop in store. Now at Harvey Norman. Go! G'day, Sue. Join me for a walk? I'd love to, but my legs are aching. I have the same problem. You need Revitive. It's the circulation booster that gets my leg muscles pumping, which could improve circulation and help relieve aches, pains and swelling. Plus, it's drug-free. It's truth. Someone got Revitive. I'll race you to the cafe. Get Revitive today. It just might change your life. For Mother's Day, see offers in store or Revitive.com. Hey, you there. Powerball has jackpotted to $8 million. Get moving. Grab your ticket now. Play now in-store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. Hello Fresh. Delicious meals delivered to your door with pre-portioned fresh ingredients. Now you can focus on what's really important. Order your box today. Hello Fresh. Inspiration delivered. From a new type of rose for mum to the cutest fur babies you'll ever meet. The best Mother's Day ideas are on new Better Homes, Friday. We have some terrifying pictures to show you now. This is a suspension bridge in China. And no, what you're seeing isn't an earthquake. The six-lane highway bridge is wobbling because of extremely high winds. But as alarming as it may look, suspension bridges are designed to be flexible and move. However, the bridge was closed and the structure was checked for damage just to be safe. Checking finance now with James Tower, Comsec. Hello, James. How did the share market end the day? Yeah, very good afternoon to you. And the Aussie market unfortunately fell for a second successive session, the ASX 200. Today down around 20 points, or a little less than 0.4 of 1%. We saw, uh, again, the financials really weighing heavily on the market. We had the big four banks all in negative territory. CBA was down about 
1.8%. The other three actually falling more than 2% each. But Macquarie Group managed to lift. It's uh, scheduled to release its first half profit, profit results tomorrow morning. We also saw some uh, improvements coming through from the likes of our healthcare, mining and tech stocks. And that really helped minimise uh, some broader losses on our market today. Property Group Goodman was one of the best up at more than 3.5%. It actually reaffirmed its full year earning guidance. The Aussie dollar at 64.4 US cents. James Tower from Comsec. Thanks, James. You're watching 7's Afternoon News live across Sydney. Still to come, slimming down in isolation. Our nation's top scientists release a step-by-step -step guide to losing weight in lockdown. We'll show you what to do in just a few minutes. The World Health Organisation has warned against the premature easing of restrictions despite numerous countries beginning to reopen as their death toll continues to rise. Hugh Whitfeld is in London. Hugh, it's a very blunt message to world leaders. It's a fairly stark message from the WHO as more countries look to lift their lockdowns. Overnight, Germany announced that all shops there can now reopen, albeit shoppers have to wear masks and practice social distancing. Here in the UK, Boris Johnson in the next 24 hours will lay out a roadmap to lifting parts of the lockdown here in Britain. He will deliver a national address on Sunday with the expectation being that some rules could be relaxed as early as Monday. That's even with the death toll here surpassing 30,000. Now, the deadliest in Europe, the second deadliest in the world after the United States. And the WHO is warning countries not to lift their lockdowns too fast and too soon. The risk of returning to lockdown remains very real if countries do not manage the transition extremely carefully and in a phased approach. There is increasing criticism of the British government and how it's allowed more than 30,000 of its own citizens to die to coronavirus when it entered the lockdown later than many other countries and hasn't imposed the sort of strict border controls that we've seen around the world, including in Australia. One distraction, though, for the government has been Professor Neil Ferguson. He is an advisor, a scientist who's been advising the government on how the lockdown should look, but he's been busted breaking his own rules, allowing his married lover to visit him during the lockdown, prompting some front pages like this one. Professor Lockdown broke lockdown to get his trousers down and Professor Lockdown, as he's been dubbed, has now resigned from his position advising the government. Thanks, Hugh. The fight over Celeste Barber's $53 million in bushfire donations is finally set to come to an end. As it stands, the New South Wales Rural Fire Service can only legally spend the money on equipment and volunteer training. A hearing date has now been scheduled to decide if the funds can go directly to fire victims as intended. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Mike Ferguson. Hello, Mike. What are you working on in the newsroom? Yeah, good afternoon. And tonight we'll have a close look at that one secret report now released into George Pell's handling of child sexual abuse within the Catholic Church. At 6, how the church responds. The Deputy Premier has defended a visit to his farm while refusing to deny a foul-mouthed outburst why colleagues say he's a hypocrite. There have been three new coronavirus cases in New South Wales, two from the ill-fated Newmarch House, as operators at the aged care home race to meet a deadline from the federal regulator. New pictures the vessel responsible for our worst cluster, the Ruby Princess, closer to home as questions continue over who's to blame for the mess she left behind. Beating the super slump, we investigate the funds that have performed the best during the downturn. And more on that heartwarming rescue, an elderly woman who spent days on the floor following a fall, reunited with her heroes. And all that and plenty more, Sydney 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. Yeah, that's an incredible story. Thanks, Fergo. The CSIRO has confirmed what many of us have thought. The pandemic is causing us to gain weight. Experts say our natural eating pattern works on a four-hourly cycle. They claim that social interaction often works as a distraction tool, but being isolated can cause us to give in to those hunger cravings more often. Dietitians are urging people to eat their meals within a 12-hour window and avoid snacking after dinner. Instead, try and distract yourself with activities to keep your mind off food. 4.48, let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon.
afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Hills Nursing Traffic Chopper. We're seeing lots of delays if you're heading through Silverwater, Parramatta Road, all the way out through to Woodville Road. And just having a look at the run through Winston Hills, a bit of a build up for Old Windsor Road now up towards the M7. Do you have a home care package? Thinking of moving from your current provider? Call Hills Nursing on 1300 13 13 93 or visit hillsnursing.com.au when a friendly reminder to wear gloves when filling up at the petrol station. More than one million Australians have accessed funds from their superannuation accounts early and there are growing concerns the scheme is being targeted by criminals. Brian Seymour joins me now. Brian, the AFP has uncovered widespread fraud. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Austrac first identified suspicious transactions on April 30. They alerted the tax office and the Australian Federal Police, which has executed five search warrants and frozen the accounts of 150 superannuation fund members. Several media reports suggested that the tax office had somehow been hacked. Today at a Senate committee hearing, the tax commissioner said that the MyGov site and other government websites have not been hacked. As far as we know, um, our systems have not been compromised. Those 150 victims are all being contacted by federal police. The total amount frozen is $120,000. In just a few short weeks, one million Australians have accessed $9 billion worth of early superannuation payments. Federal police say this was not a phishing email scam, but rather an organised criminal syndicate, possibly offshore. It appears what they've done is sent superannuation funds legitimate looking applications from the ATO containing actual details from real members and having their superannuation paid into these criminal bank accounts. When the tax commissioner was asked if he could guarantee the safety of Australian superannuation, he said that would be a tough call and that our best protection is to better protect our identity information and personal data. Next in 7's Afternoon News, David Brown will be here with your latest forecast. David, I'm assigning you to the Home Secretary. Very good, Mum. Pleasure to meet you, Mum. I'm late for a meeting. She's got an agenda to heighten fear, to seize power. I don't need you to vote for me. Only to protect me. These plots do not always arise from outside. She's got you wrapped around her finger. This is a very dangerous politician. There's been an inside man all along. Looks like the Home Secretary couldn't be in safer hands. The must-see event. Bodyguard coming to seven. Take a moment to experience bliss. Smooth, melting Lindor from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Melt into a moment of bliss. I need you to give blood. Like story time depends on it. Like Saturdays depend on it. Like tomorrow depends on it. Your life might have changed, but for Australians like Eva, your blood donation is still as essential as ever. So please, book a donation with Lifeblood today. Come home to stylish winter living. Shop Beacon's stunning new designs and get 30% off your second item. Mix and match anything from our entire range and get 30% off your second. Sale on now. Beacon. At Nature's Own, we know that fatigue can be either physical or mental. Nature's Own Sleep and Energy Range can help you improve the quality of your sleep or support energy production throughout your day. Your body's hot. Nature's Own. Be body smart. What's happening now, Detective? They're still there. You would have thought they'd moved out by now. Got themselves a little unit somewhere. Call us today to find out more about a reverse mortgage from Heartland. Heartland Seniors Finance. As credit to you, here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? The world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. 
That's why we've created Botanica fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. To win the chase requires a world of knowledge. Reykjavik, hey, Iraq, Antarctica, Cape Town, Mexico City. But with such high stakes, all it takes is one mistake. The black drongo is a bird species native to which continent? Stop the clock. You're flaming drongo. New the chase, coming up next on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. The last super moon of the year is just minutes away. The phenomenon called the flower moon has been observed across the globe over the past few hours and will make its appearance in Australia at 5.13 p.m. Australian Eastern. It's called a super moon when a full moon coincides with being in its closest rotation to Earth. Hmm. David's back. Looking he has the very latest forecast. Hello again, Brownie. Yes, good afternoon. And the uh, mild and uh, dry weather rolls on for now. Today's top uh, tapped out on the high side of normal again. In fact, uh, 25 degrees. It's about 5 degrees above average. And uh, that happened uh, mid-afternoon statewide. We've still got vast areas of high clouds sweeping across our state. It's all moving in from the west to the north at the moment. It's uh, 23 degrees in Lismore. As we head south down to Naruma, it's uh, 19 degrees. A little bit uh, fresh on top of Threadbow at the moment. It's only 6 degrees. Degrees. to the satellite a change which is now knocking on our border has peaked it is now expected to slip away to the south it's a dry change for us what we're keeping an eye on though is another one here it comes now racing across the great australian bite tomorrow it will impact our state during saturday but tomorrow will be dry and mild to warm and generally sunny warm days also expected in brisbane around 26 degrees for melbourne 20 degrees and uh, fine, although clouds starting to build during the second half of the day. A few more showers are likely through southern parts of WA, including Perth, and around 19 degrees. For our city, look at this, 27 degrees. Almost summer-like, isn't it? It will be a stunning day under a northerly breeze coming off low of around 15 degrees. As for the next seven days, cloud increasing on Saturday, remaining dry around the mid-20s. A cool, dry change coming through Saturday night, hence the uh, cooler conditions on Sunday and clear skies. And look at that, it's clear all the way through to Thursday next week. That's latest weather, more at 6. <laughs> Tomorrow looks great. Thanks, Indeed. Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Thursday. Mark Ferguson will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night. Bye for now. Who is that? I don't know. It's Tane, Ari's brother. I don't think they like each other too much. He's a bit of a troublemaker. He's about to arrive. Some will love it. Some won't. I told you to stay away. Yeah, but you're not calling the shots now, are you? It's all that heavy weight. Who's your new friend? He's no friend. Maybe I'll see you around, yeah? Didn't come here to make trouble. 